Hi, I'm Stephanie Strange. Want to hear something scary? Red is dead. Doctors take an oath to help people, no matter the circumstances. But what happens when the roles reverse? Dr. Polinski was walking out of the hospital when a nurse called for help. She was exhausted from a double shift and just wanted to get home. But her kind nature got the better of her. She rushed back inside and saw that a victim of a chemical accident needed immediate abdominal surgery. Dr. Polinski jumped right in. Halfway through surgery, the doctor noticed the patient's blood was a strange color. She called over another doctor to observe. Suddenly, torrents of blood started spewing from the patient's guts. The room was dripping and no one could control it. The man died on the table. Dr. Polinski pronounced him dead at 11, 11 p.m. She placed a red wristband on the man to indicate that the body needed to be transported to the morgue. Dr. Polinski was exhausted. With her head held low, she entered the elevator. There was just one other woman inside, also going down. As they waited for the doors to close, a patient was shuffling towards the elevator. Dr. Polinski glanced up and froze in horror. She must be seeing things. She looked again. Then, with sheer panic, she began repeatedly pounding the close the door button. Just as the patient's bony pale hand reached out towards them, the elevator doors slammed shut. The fellow passenger reprimanded the doctor for being so rude. Why would she not wait to let the elderly patient in on the elevator? Dr. Polinsky replied, her voice shaking. That patient just, just died on, on the operating table. Dr. Polinsky asked if the woman had seen the red wristband on his arm, confirming he was dead. You mean something like this? The passenger said, smiling, revealing her own red wristband. The doctor froze and took a deep breath. That's when she noticed a stench filling up on the tiny space. It was dried blood. Drips of sweat slowly trickled down her face. She tried to open the elevator doors, but while pressing the buttons, the lights went out. All she could make out in the dark were the woman's glowing red eyes. There was a sudden snapping sound, and the elevator started to freefall. They could see a flash of light every time they passed a floor through the tiny gaps in the doors. There was nowhere to run. There was no one to hear her scream. The woman got closer to her with every flash of light. The doctor backed against the door until the last moment when the elevators came to a stop. Dr. Polinsky racing down the hall, she slammed doors shut while hearing them reopen behind her. Out of breath and at a dead end, she turned around. She was face to face with bulging, blood red eyes and the crooked smile of the woman from the elevator. The woman reached out her bony pale hand to grab the doctor, whose eyes were locked on her red wristband. And then she hit the floor. Dr. Polinsky woke up in a daze laying in a hospital bed. She looked around her frantically for signs of someone she knew. Why was she on a bed? How did she get there? A nurse was writing some notes down on a clipboard. Dr. Polinsky called the nurse, asking what had happened. Not looking up from her notes, the nurse explained that the maintenance men found her lying on the floor on the elevator. No permanent damage, just a heat stroke. She would be fine. What a relief. She must have been hallucinating. Nothing had happened after all. The nurse told Dr. Polinsky she was in good hands now. And when the nurse turned to face Dr. Polinsky, her red eyes shone as she began to place a red wristband on the screaming patient's hand. <laughs>